different ideas throughout talks today. We've talked about deep fakes, we've talked about the news, we've talked about media. And the term that's been thrown around, one of those popular search terms of 2020 was the term fake news. And we're obsessed with that, but it's, it's more than just fake news that we're fed. It's beyond that when it comes to how people are represented. It's not about fake news, it's what news. What news are we given? If you read every headline about students in the past two years and took an average, most of them are extremely negative. It talks about how rugby lads and group chats are causing problems. It's talking about how students have caused destruction to property. Students have caused this problem, that problem, every problem in between. But nobody actually sees what's really going on. Whenever you ha talk about fake news, we need to look at actually what we're getting told. We're only getting told a small percentage of the true story. I was fortunate enough to grow up in an inclusive family that were very open to new ideas. And whenever I came to Glasgow, I was surprised to see how inclusive it was in so many ways, despite how many divides it had over the years from politics and football, but actually how vocal the students were about real issues, not just facing students, but facing the world. The number of people that I've been able to meet over the years in my role and outside my role through interactions, friendships, everything, has really not only opened my eyes but confirmed what my thoughts were. Students aren't the worst. We have to ignore what the news is saying every time they put out what things are going wrong or whatever people are being told is how students are and what the average student is, but things have changed. If you look in the 1970s and 80s in the student movement, how they were driving change, they were pushing for better equality. If you look even in recent years at Glasgow University, they led the change for equal marriage. And they were the driving force in this city, leading that march at the forefront of that. Not executives, not people in charities taking big pay cuts, but students paying fees to be in a city and still wanting to see that change. A completely selfless act for the good of humanity and the other people around them. If you look at the biggest issues that are facing our country and beyond the world right now, there are so many things that students are really driving the change. I had the fortunate opportunity of working within the university and also as a sabbatical officer with the university. One of the things was about the sanitary product scheme and that was introducing the schools and colleges first and my predecessors and myself and my, the current successor to myself have helped implement that for what should be a basic right for all people and now the Scottish government is adapting it to expand it and look into the future how it can be free for everyone, not just people in education but for all. Whenever you look at the biggest issues in headlines outside of what students are talking about, people, you always see headlines about war, drone use and bombings, how the environment is crumbling around us. Someone has already said in the comments today, and I have to feed that in, about plastic pollution and how that's impacting the world. And we're looking at green technology and how that's changing things. And there's the divide between the big oil companies and the gas companies and the people trying to do better for humankind. But when you bring it locally, these issues become more apparent and how strong a student voice can be in that change. The number of people to sign petitions and urge the university to become more green this year has been like no one has seen before in any other climate activism in the past 20 years. Climate is one of the most talked about terms in the media, online, influencers around the world trying to put their spin on it. But who is the one form of population that is really actively daily trying to change that and that is the students. We've got a Green New Deal led by the students and that is guiding the university and their plans on how they can become, become a carbon neutral university and in the future become a more green university and it's driving these, this change and on a wider scale that influences the city, it influences a country. It's not just a personal experience, it's a widespread ripple effect that people can have just by using their voice and the platform and confidence that students are given for that, but not the credit. We talk about wars and recent bombings in Syria by the US government and how disgusting that is, but no one talks about the arms divestment group at the University of Glasgow trying to push for their institution to be better and in reflection on a wider scale how that can impact policy by a government and how they approach things in future. These are just two small examples, never mind the change going on within. We've had talks today about gender and sexual identity and education for schools. 
But universities before the rest of the country have already started implementing, and you see it in Glasgow more and more, uh, allowing to self-identify your gender with how you react and how you feel, rather than having to go through long medical processes, which we know cause more stress for trans people, and how many people are struggling to get by because they're not getting the medical help or even the recognition that they deserve as human beings. But students are leading the forefront of that change locally, and that has a ripple effect. It goes from one university to another. There's an exchange of information and knowledge. And then that inevitably goes higher up and higher up and becomes a greater reflection on wider society and gives people hope for the future. We keep seeing these dates of, you know, when will the climate crisis be too late? When will we run, run out of time to make that change that we need to? But students are the one leading that change. They're not one activist put in a platform, put in a live stream by a news broadcast. No, they're locally making that change. A small startup by Glasgow University students, which won a business grant to push out what they were doing just in the past year, was looking at zero waste food delivery systems with carbon neutral delivery uh, methods, be it biking, electric cars, and this front. It's not for profit. Maybe long term they can turn it into a profitable business, as they should be able to, but they're an ethical business. And it makes you think about how much student influence on what we're doing molds how we buy products. Where do we put our money? And what businesses do we want to support? You see local initiatives like this doing a lot more than Uber Eats, Just Eat and Deliveroo do in regards to trying to make sure that we are being a greener, better society. And that's not led from multi-million pound corporations or trust funds to fund that. It's students trying to get a thousand pounds just to be able to set up their business through charitable funding for a better change. If you look at the, the housing rights in Scotland, we already know that in Edinburgh, for example, the council tax is higher than it is in, 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 uh, Oxford, in Oxford Street in London. And this shouldn't be the case. We're in a country struggling where people can pay rent. There's more homelessness on the rise and yet the costs are going higher. And you don't see politicians pushing for this in Holyrood or in Westminster. No, you have students forming tenants associations. You have student leaving movements. You have student leaders in student politics trying to put for rent pressure zones in local areas. Leading what could also not just be a change for the students, but a change for families struggling to pay rent and going to paycheck to paycheck every month. The effects that this could have on wider society, just as one example, is massive. Looking at even how councils function, how they implement these things as a result. When it comes to where the council tax money goes, where is this money getting spent? And is it going to the right place and the right people? And we know right now that these things aren't being done right. And students are the most vocal people. When you look at your average student, they're not causing damage to property. They're not urinating in the streets, they're not acting with public disorderly, they're not in group chats with these horrible messages. These images, um, how the media portrays it, are a constant reminder of the negativity that is fueled within our society by the media. Controversy sells, good deeds don't. And that's one of the most important messages we need to remember whenever we read these papers. A group of four boys in Durham went up in the papers and it was on the news for weeks. There's still headlines coming out every so often as it progresses. And that was four individuals. At Glasgow University alone, there's 30,000 students. In Scotland, there's, a, there's hundreds of thousands of students. Home students, local students, mature students, international students driving this change. We've got student leaders at Glasgow University who are discussing policy with politicians and running for politics because of how much change they're making for home and estranged students. We've got students defending sexual violence and trying to promote greater equality and greater safety in our city. We're getting better lighting, we're getting better security and making people feel safer. Yes, it helps the students who live in these areas, but it helps everybody else. There aren't average families or average people out in the streets protesting against gender-based violence. There was a march last year of thousands of students Fight for the night, save our streets. Make them a safer place for women and people as a whole. We shouldn't have to go outside with something in the back of our head telling us that we need to be careful of danger around us. But unfortunately, we're in a society where people do. And again, you don't have your local MSP 
on the news talking about why we need to stop this. No. You have students paying £9,000 a year, £450-plus a month in rent, potentially more taxes, bills, extra costs, learning materials, and they're the ones driving the change. They're paying for everybody else to get that right. And I want to follow back to what I said before. Controversy sells, good deeds and the truth don't. An amazing book which I read, suggested by my physics teacher when I was 14, was The Tiger That Isn't, Seeing Through a World of Numbers. I'd recommend it to anybody. And it says how the media has portrayed things for years, especially newspapers, manipulated stories and media and data, not because it's fake news, because it sells better to how they sell it. And instead, we need to see what real activism is. We need to see what real change is happening and where it's coming from. Students are the worst because the media wants you to think so. Because that sells. When actually, students are the best thing for society there is right now. With knowledge, determination, activism, and social change being a focal point within universities. Thank you.